Fermentation is one of the most critical and subjective aspects of producing fine cacao. Throughout the cacao producing areas of the world, there are a wide variety of fermentation practices, ranging from heaps, baskets, trays, and wooden boxes. Any ferment is only as good as the quality of the fruit going in. Pods should be harvested regularly, meaning no more than at a three week interval. Only harvest fully ripe pods and pods that have changed to at least 50% of their externally ripe color. Reliable fermentation requires a critical mass, a volume of cacao that's large enough to retain the heat generated by fermentation and not dry out prematurely due to a high surface area to volume ratio. In general, this means you'll need to harvest at least 1500 pods at a time, which depending on the season and variety of cacao cultivated will yield about 150 kilos of fresh cacao. Pods should be broken immediately after harvesting if possible, or if they're to be rested for a few days, they need to be stored in a covered area out of direct sunlight and rain. When pods are broken and the wet seeds extracted, it's best to separate any diseased pods and seeds, as well as germinated, overripe, or pods that have been chewed on by animals like squirrels or woodpeckers. Collect fresh seed in clean buckets or woven polyethylene bags. Definitely don't use old fertilizer or animal feed sacks that may contain contaminants or impart all flavors. As with the harvested pods, don't leave fresh cacao in the sun while continuing to harvest throughout the day. If using poly bags to carry wet cacao, be sure to not let the bags contact bare ground or steel like in the bed of a truck. Contact with these surfaces will cause discoloration. In the case of metal, it will discolor the beans with a blue, gray, or green color and can cause off flavors. If the cacao will not be put into boxes or heaps the same day, it can be stored in a covered area in poly bags to drain overnight and the ferment can be prepared and covered in the morning. Box fermentation is primarily used in production of most heirloom and specialty cacao. Box construction, dimensions, and maintenance are often overlooked and have a significant impact on fermentation. While several types of wood, such as cedro or laurel, are often used in Latin America, the wood used for boxes can be almost any hardwood that resists splitting and warping. Fermenting cacao puts a lot of strain on wooden boxes because of the high temperatures and the fact that the inside of the box is wet and the outside will be dry. For this reason, Suitable wood and strong joinery and fasteners are recommended if boxes are to last very long. Wooden planks should be at least three quarters of an inch or two centimeters in thickness and should be screwed or nailed securely without allowing fasteners to penetrate to the internal surfaces of the box. Because fresh undrained cacao conveniently has about the same density of water, it's fairly easy to create boxes of the capacity you require. Here at Kamana Nui, the smallest box holds up to 180 kilos. Its internal dimensions are 24 inches in length and width and 20 inches in depth, about 61 by 50 centimeters. So the volume is about 190 liters. Typically, the mass expands by about 5%. So the capacity of a 190 liter box is about 180 kilos. A depth no greater than 50 to 60 centimeters is recommended because temperature differential between the top and the bottom will be greater, and from a practical perspective, reaching into deeper boxes is more challenging for those turning the boxes. Fermentation boxes don't need to be cleaned after every use, but should at least be able to air dry thoroughly before being loaded again. It's important to reopen the drainage holes in the bottom of the boxes, which quickly become clogged with dry pulp and can be reamed out with a screwdriver or other rod. If the last fermentation went awry in one way or another, for example, over-fermented or moldy, it's recommended to power wash or scrub the boxes before using again. If using water and cleaning, be sure the boxes are completely dry before using again, or there's a good chance black mold would develop early in the fermentation. Otherwise, with regard to box maintenance and cleaning, they should be scraped of old dried pulp and thoroughly cleaned at least in between harvest seasons. Patch or repair any cracks or openings between the boards which may develop from the wood warping over time. 